I just wanted to thank everyone for coming as we celebrate Mary today. Uh, my name is Maggie Malley from the Council on Aging, uh, and we are thrilled that you've all come. And, um, to, as I said, to celebrate Mary. And J.R. Colby, who is just behind me, uh, the chairman of the Newbury Board of Selectmen, will say a few words about the Boston Post cane uh, and some words about Mary, and then perhaps Mary will say a few words of her own <laughs> about how to live a long, wonderful life <laughs> and with a smile. And again, thank you, and J.R. Thank you all for coming for the presentation of the Boston Post Cane. I'm going to go give a little history. The origins of the Boston Post Cane. On August 2nd, 1909, Mr. Edwin A. Grosier, publisher of the Boston Post, a newspaper forwarded to the Board of Selectmen in 700 towns, no cities, in New England, a gold-headed ebony cane with the request that it be presented with the compliments of the Boston Post to the oldest male citizen of the town, to be used by him as long as he lives or moves from the town and at his death be handed to the next oldest citizen of the town. The cane would belong to the town and not the person who received it. All canes were made by J.F. Fraidley and Company, a New York manufacturer from ebony shipped in seven foot lengths from the Congo in Africa. They were cut to cane lengths, seasoned for six months, turned on lathes to the right thickness, coated and polished. They had a 14 karat gold head, two inches long, decorated by hand in a ferrule tip. The head was engraved with the inscription, presented, to the, presented by the Boston Post Cane to the oldest citizen of Newbury. And then also to be transmitted, which means to be handed down. The Board of Selectmen were to be the trustees of the cane and keep it always in the hands of the oldest citizen. The custom of the Boston Post Cane took hold in these towns lucky enough to have canes. As the years went by, some were lost, stolen, taken out of town and not returned, or destroyed by accident. In 1930, after considerable controversy, eligibility for the cane was open to women as well. <laughs> so, some interesting history here. Now, a few things about Mary. Mary was born in 1921, one of eight children in South Boston. Both her parents and grandparents were born in Greece. She grew up in Roxbury on Huntington Avenue and graduated from the Girls High School in downtown Boston in 1939. Mary met George Dallas in the church choir at the Boston Cathedral, and they married in 1941. Throughout the years, they lived in this area as well as Chicago, Worcester, Framingham, and Weston. Her husband, George, passed away in 2009 after 68 wonderful years of marriage. Mary volunteered throughout her life, such as volunteering at the Hellenic Nursing Home in Canton for 30 years. Mary also sang in multiple church choirs, depending on where she was living at the time. She recently left her church choir at the Annunciation Greek Orthodox Church in Newburyport after particip participating for many years. Mary's also passionate about being a member of the St. Basil's Kitchen Crew at the Greek Church. Every Monday, the church provides a delicious free lunch for anyone who's in need of food, in or companionship. And by the way, Mary is currently the oldest active parishioner in the church. <laughs> Mary is a proud mother of four children, son Christopher and daughter-in-law Mary of Byfield, daughter Dorothea Harris of Toronto, daughter Anna Maria and son-in-law Peter Starrett of Bellingham, and daughter Fontaine and son-in-law Andre DeBuse of Newbury. She also has 12 grandchildren and five great-grandchildren. Mary, the Boston Post came to steep the tradition. It represents respect, wisdom, and longevity. And as the chairman of the Newbury Board of Selectmen, I'm honored to pass it to you.
got the oldest, they checked it out. <laughs> so, uh, I have a lot of love to give, and I get a lot of love, and, and I have a wonderful family, and I have wonderful friends. I, I live my life as well as I could, and uh, maybe I took care of myself, I hope, and live this long, and I'm hoping a lot of my friends will. And what else can I say? Uh, I, I do have a wonderful children and grandchildren and great grandchildren. And uh, also, I, I'm, I'm a people person. When I get out of high school, all my jobs were with the public. I, I love working with the public. I never liked like, sitting in an office and just, you know, being a secretary. I love working with people the public, and I still do. Yes. And I think that's been good. And also, I like keeping busy. That's why I've done a few things like, you know, volunteering. And, and I tell the girls, keep busy, eat right, uh, and eat Mediterranean food. And keep your, yourself healthy. That, I think that means a lot. And when I go to my heart doctor and also my Primary care doctors, both Dr. March and Dr. Barati, always say, "Mary, you are amazing." <laughs> <laughs> I must be the oldest patient. <laughs> That's how I feel. <laughs> anyway, but I did want to thank you all so much for doing this for me. It's a great honor, really, to, to think that I've lived this long to be able to come to this. You know, I think I've lived this many years. But I'm grateful, and I think I'm, I try to keep myself. And I love you. <laughs> I hope that you'll stay and have uh, some refreshments. My colleague Gail Keogh has set up a, a lovely little repast for us. And, uh, Give your well wishes to Mary. Again, thank you so much. Thank you.